It's gonna be a dusty one today, guys. So I cleaned the vacuum out, obviously, and we had a huge white cloud of dust in here. And I thought, ah, drywall dust, you evil devil. Well, it turns out the filter had fallen off the vacuum. So what are you gonna do? So I got the, cleaned it out, but also put the filter back on. Hopefully, that will help a little bit. But I'm pretty sure at some point today, I may end up wearing a mask. This part won't be too bad, but once we get everything kind of floated out, there'll be a little bit of dust. So I found my sanding block, or whatever it's called, the, the head, but I don't have any paper. And I don't think I want to use paper, I want to use one of those meshy looking sanding cloths, or whatever they're called. I don't have one, so I'm going to go grab one. Uh, and I'm gonna grab some more joint compound, and I think that will set up set us up nicely to get this all floated. By some miracle, with this heater running in here, and if I don't make it too bad, maybe, maybe we can get it textured tonight. If that's possible, manana paint. But you never know. Stick around to find out. Looking good. Basically just knocking off all the high spots from taping. There's probably some really intelligent method to all this stuff that I'm not aware of. But I think the goal is to tape it first, which just basically gets the panels joined to each other. And it also creates a backing for the, the topping mud that we're gonna use to try to make it look like there's only one sheet of sheetrock here. And I'll admit it right now before I even start, this is also not my strength. Uh, there's some artistry to this stuff. It's, it's the ability to kind of see the material and feel the knife and, and kind of make it all work. Let's see what we can do. I think the ultimate goal too is to use the least amount of mud possible. That makes for less sanding and also conserves resources and it dries a lot quicker. I still have it in my mind that I might be able to get texture on here tonight. So let's see how bad this goes. more mud. Those little mud containers are kind of cute. <laughs> I don't even know why we bought them. We should be buying bigger boxes of mud. I'm afraid to show you guys a close up. All right. Making progress. I am down a half a tub on my second tub of mud. And I have a little ways left to go. I can say, kind of like the taping, it's coming back to me a little bit. 
Not that I was ever good at this, but it's, we're getting there. Where the bull nose goes is gonna take up a lot of mud. And I think that area, and you guys probably already knew this, is probably what's gonna keep me from texturing tonight. I'm not gonna be able to get that sanded. Just this little guy over here took probably, I don't know, eighth of an inch of mud. Using the eight inch knife, I think is what I'm using, or is it a 10? No, it is an eight. Is working well. I thought it would be easier to feather the edges, but for some reason I'm still struggling to get my corners. Every once in a while I'm like, all right, I got it, I got it, I got it, and then I don't got it. <laughs> Seems like when I taped, I kind of pushed the, in some areas I pushed the tape too deep into the corner. And that may be a byproduct of not having my sheetrock overlapping. So this may be one of those things where like I screwed it up on that side and then like over here I'm paying for it. Totally have a lot to learn. And then it seems like the mud in the second bin is a little too thick. Um, some of the guys out there who do this for a living probably have like the perfect consistency. It seems like if it's too thick, you get a lot of separations where the mud actually wants to stick to the knife more than it wants to stick to its mud friend. I'm afraid to thin it though, because if you get it too thin, then it's like trying to put water on the wall, right? That, sheetrock. Lissa says dinner's ready, so I think I'll take a short break, step away from the, uh, uh, the mud and then well, I guess we'll give the heater a little bit of time to work and we'll just see where we're at Things are definitely drying on the edges. You can see Like there you can see that the mud's drying on the edges and here where it's kind of darker. That's where it's still wet I'm hoping that the saving grace is gonna be a sanding block That's gonna let me sand a lot of this stuff down in the corner and of course just knock the high spots off this is why it's great for us to do this work now because if we may come to the conclusion we want a professional to do the sheetrock in the house not me but if i can make this look pretty good then maybe just maybe Alyssa will let me do the sheetrock the rest of the house uh oh that's not looking very good so my tape is picking up moisture from this big slob of mud it looks like it's either dished out here or dished in there, one or the other. Well, hopefully, once I sand that tomorrow, we may have to do another round of mud, guys. It's funny how drywall, I feel like for me, goes from looking horrible to pretty good to horrible to pretty good. And right now, it's starting to look better because just in the time Alyssa and I were eating dinner, some of these upper areas, the edges are already drying out. And I feel like maybe just because to the eye, it kind of looks so blotchy. That's why it doesn't look very good. But then as it starts to dry out and everything starts to kind of look more uniform, it starts looking better. That's not a promise that this is gonna look really good. All right, time to get back to it. See if we can get this finished tonight. Actually, I know we can get it finished tonight. Hopefully that didn't dry out too much. It's still workable. I think mud is cheap. In fact, I think I'm gonna clean my tray out completely. That could bite me in the butt. Once you start getting hard chunks in your mud, yeah, yep, time to clean it out. See what I mean how thick that is, guys? The guys that do this for a living probably know what I'm, I'm talking about. Oh, maybe there's a little bit of water there. Maybe I should have stirred it a little bit or something. That's looking pretty good. The stuff I picked up out of there first, Definitely is a little bit drier. That's looking a little bit, that's, that's actually looking a lot better. Well, let's give it a try. pretty good, except I'm starting to worry that I didn't get enough mud. This is all done. So I still need to do the tiny little strip and I'm hoping that doesn't take much. I'll probably use my four inch knife right next to the surround. Need to do that on both sides. 
and then this guy, this horizontal guy, and I think that corner and this corner, boosh, it's gonna be tight. Those corner bull noses took a lot more mud than I expected. I guess it makes sense because I'm basically feathering it out to the wall instead of kind of feathering it tight. I don't know, maybe there's, I'm sure the guys that do this for a living know what the minimum amount of feathering that you can do is. Yeah, this is, <laughs> it's totally a two man, two hand job. goes right there <laughs> total rookie mistake I should have done that corner first and probably got it down to about right there and then the vanity is gonna cover this whole area up here anyway <laughs> but no I did that wall first and up here first and did all this stuff first I guess well I guess there's not really a good time to run out of mud I think it's okay this is gonna be fun tomorrow. There's gonna to be a lot of sanding. And I probably better find my respirator. I don't think these bullnose areas turned out too bad. Ask me once they've been sanded. They look okay. I can definitely see what the people on social media meant about making sure you've got enough kind of set back to the bullnose. There's not a couple lessons in this bathroom. I don't know what there is. Overall, I would say it's looking pretty good. Of course, like I said earlier, it looks really blotchy, so it kind of just looks bad. Uh, you can see that these areas are drying out pretty good. Of course, this is the ceiling, and that's where most of the heat's going from this little heater. Uh, over there, still looking pretty dark. And the only area where I seem to be having the problem with the tape is right here. So I'm not sure if there's just a really big gap in these panels. There must be. There must be a big gap there. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. Maybe I should have done something different. It kind of makes sense because I don't see that problem anywhere else. I don't have it in the corners. I don't have it on the ceiling. I don't have this kind of puckering tape look. And I know from experience that if that paper, it, does, it feels like there's an indentation it doesn't feel like there's a bump. Well, that kind of looks like a bump. Yeah, I can kind of see, yeah, if I kind of push on that. Well, I know from experience that sanding through the paper in this tape sucks. It's really hard to get through, uh, unless you have some really coarse paper. And of course, I'm using a super harsh light, which of course makes that look absolutely disastrous and I'm hoping it's not disastrous. I'll tell you what happened there. I thought, oh, I'll just fix it a little bit. And then, yep, I just made a train wreck out of it. So I'm hoping that maybe when I sand that I can get all that to be fairly smooth. I, I don't think it'll, I don't think it's ruined, but I think I just made a bunch more work for myself. This has been a really, sucky reintroduction to sheetrock. I guess there's a lot of people out there right now who are, you know, going mad crazy for uh, shiplap and stuff like that. And I can kind of see why. <laughs> if you've never, if you've never done sheetrock and you try to do it, I don't know, you probably get really frustrated. I don't know, maybe you guys are naturals, but I can totally see why somebody would want to just cut a board and stick it up there 
and have tongue and groove or shiplap or something and dun dun dun, it's all done. And I guess it's worth saying that the the, the reasons for doing sheetrock are beyond a finished surface. It actually is a fire protective barrier. So that's something to think about too. So it, you know, and it's paintable uh, where, you know, shiplap, I guess you could paint that too. Or you could leave it real wood. I don't know. Well, I guess I'm just gonna leave this here for tonight. I'll let it dry and come back tomorrow. I have a hunch tonight I'm going to have sheetrock nightmares. Because <laughs> uh, if this wasn't bad enough, I'm gonna be using the spray can texture, and my experience with that stuff is 50-50. Mm, so I guess as long as Alyssa's happy with the bathroom, it's a garage bathroom. But I, I am going through these motions because I'm wanting to quantify whether we wanna do the stuff upstairs ourselves or not. I want to, I want to, but I also wanna have a nice house. <laughs> And even though we've been able to get this far and do so many things on our own, finish work. Finish work, there's really no forgiveness. There's no like, oh, we'll cover it up later. So I have a lot of respect for people who do finish work. All right, I'm off to do other errands. See you guys tomorrow. tomorrow before the dust flies probably could take this out well it is way too late in the morning yeah right it's not nighttime anymore it's not morning and I thought I'd just come check on this mud and see if there's any chance if I can get it sanded tonight. Um, that's actually looking like I could sand it. That's looking pretty good, but yeah, right here by the bull nose, I can see this is still wet. That's gonna bite me in the butt if I try to run sandpaper over that. And everything else is looking pretty good. Well, yeah, this is... This is really bad over here. This is still pretty wet. I mean, it's, you can at least touch it with your hand. So that's progress. That's, well, there's still a little bit wet right there. That's looking pretty ready. Well, right here where I finished, that's still damp. Oh, uh, well. Well, it was worth a look. I think sometimes the solution is just to go to bed. <laughs> Give it a day, right? Give it a little bit of time. Can you tell I'm anxious? Still have a pretty good list of things that need to be done on the bathroom. And maybe to help myself a little bit mentally, I'll write them down really quick here. So we've got a sand texture. Uh, then what? We've got to do the electrical outlets. Uh, we got to plumb the fan flooring, set the toilet and fixtures. Uh, electrical outlets, lights, that makes sense. Uh, shower door and the uh, man door. Is that everything, guys? No big deal. We'll have that done by tomorrow. <laughs> okay, plan B, let's go get some sleep. It's cooling off in here a little bit, which is the first time that's happened since we put heat in. I'm kind of curious. I know it's cold outside. I'm just curious how cold. Oh, yep, there it is, 29. Yeah, the garage is cooling off a little bit even though the house is holding 60. I know that we've got uh, quite a bit of air coming in through the man door and the garage doors downstairs, which we knew about, but I'm guessing we're losing some air up here. Yeah, because there's no draft by this door, which means the air's going the other way. It's on its way out. Job security, guys. I guess we'll deal with that. Pretty soon we'll get our permanent man doors installed. Just checking all the windows, make sure they're closed. <laughs> we got our permanent man doors installed and then we can work on getting these doors foamed and stuff. Okay, fine, I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. Fogelfish, we have to go in the RV. Hey, we have to go in the RV, okay? Are you gonna go in the RV? Huh? You can't stay in here all night. There's nobody to let you out. Yeah. Okay, come on, let's go in the RV. 
You want to stay in here, huh? You don't want to go in the RV? Oh, I see B. Okay, but we have to go sleep in the RV. Mom's in there. Yeah, Mom's not going to come in here. No, not yet. Put himself to bed already. <laughs> oh, my gosh.